one of these opened up and uh, I'm going to use it to charge the batteries so I'm going to hook it up to the batteries first and then uh, uh, hook up the AC to just this one so I can charge my batteries make sure that all uh, full and then uh, take it from there okay got that crimped on there and uh, what you need to do is uh, thread the cable through there before you crimp it because that crimp will not fit through the uh, whatever this is called so anyhow uh, thread it through strip it crimp it and then install it in the machine there we go And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put two more screws in the bottom of this EG4 because I noticed when I was pressing up, trying to unscrew this panel, I actually pushed it off of the, the uh, screws up there. So uh, I want to make sure this guy does not move. Um, I like one screw's enough. So get this up through there first. And then I'm going to put the crimp lug on it. I like this guy. That's a IWIS HX50B1. It goes anywhere from 8 gauge all the way up to 1.0 gauge. You just push this and rotate it to the right size. This is number two. Okay, I got this. I put two screws in just for the time being. And I still got work to do in there, but I didn't want to get this out of the way. So I have room over here. But anyhow, I'm done with this uh, breaker, so I'm going to go ahead and put the thing back together. Right. There. You probably heard the saying, read the fucking manual. And I did after I did all this work. And the manual says if you want to have UL conformity, you need to put this little extension box in here instead of going straight through. If you don't need UL conformity, then do it just like I did. I live out in the boonies and I probably don't need UL conformity, but just for resale value or uh, if I do ever want to get this thing inspected and on the grid, then I probably should be UL compliant. So I'm gonna undo what I did here. It shouldn't be that, that difficult and then uh, install this and reinstall these things. Okay, I've got the first one wired up and I'm working on the second one. Uh, let me torque those down so I can find my bridge.
Okay, uh, this is number two wire welding cable, and I'm using it to get down to the uh, junction terminals, and then from there to the batteries, I'm going to go with uh, four up. The, the, the cables that came with it were much thicker. So anyhow, I need to get the uh, get this switch in here and I want them to be at the same level. So right about there. Fancy, expensive looking box. Uh, it's weatherproof. Of course, we're outside, but I don't need that. I think it's a bit overkill, but that's what came with the kit, so that's what I'm using. And they say in the manual that if you want to be UL compliant, you need to add this little piece of extension off the bottom. Otherwise, you're not UL compliant. You don't need to if you live out in the boonies like I do. But someday I may want to sell this place and uh, make sure it's compliant. There we go. UL compliant thing of beauty. Now I need to get the box down here. Uh, negative is below positive. So negative to there. I gotta measure this. They recommend that they all be the same length, so I'm gonna go get a tape measure. And they say try to make them the same length. And I'm gonna give it a test. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. That is twenty one and three eighths. Yep, twenty one and three eighths, so I love this crimper. 
Foolproof. This guy's got four lugs on it, so I got two inverters and potentially uh, another battery. Oops. Crescent wrench because that socket's not deep enough. Maybe I'd find a 916 deep well. And hallelujah! 916 deep well. forgot to do get me a positive wire coming out of here oh well <coughs> brain fart okay these guys are about looks like three quarters uh, state of charge so uh, I've left them all hooked up overnight and turned on so they should be very well balanced and I'm going to turn on this guy over here just the AC and uh, let them start charging and see if I can go 100% with this guy. I'm going to go flip the AC on. Okay. And it's waking up. up just the batteries and AC to this one I haven't hooked this guy up yet uh, but he does power up so now the batteries are starting to charge I'm gonna just leave this here all day and see uh, if I can get a hundred percent out of all these guys okay this is it so far and I'm concerned that when I start adding condense for AC in, AC out, and uh, the PVN. So uh, it's going to get real messy and cluttered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this piece down here, and I'm going to put in a trough, a four-foot trough all the way across here, and that should be able to clean this mess up 
and use the trough to hide any of the, the bulk wires that go between these two and, and this uh, panel over here. On it's a bright, sunshiny day outside, and I just took up and turned on all the batteries. And turned on the solar panels just to see what's going on. Uh, it, see, it sees the solar panels and it's blinking the battery, but the charge light is not on. And that's because shortly after I turned them all on, they became fully charged. So it's just like just sitting there at idle, dumping all, all that solar energy into thin air. So uh, I'm anxious to get this thing hooked up. I'm still waiting on the uh, the trough that goes across here and uh, some uh, on-off switches for the the, the uh, solar and uh, I want to put some AC on-off breakers over here on this end so I want to clean this all up to where most of the wires are hitting and uh, I'm still waiting